Good morning. We've got a lot of stuff to cover today, so listen good, okay? A lot of resources for you. Let's open in Colossians 2. We're going to continue from last week what we were talking about. Uh, doctrines that are false. Is it important what you believe? It is. It's very important what we believe. And many of us have been uh, unaware of doctrines that we've heard for 30 years. We just thought it was normal. And some of those today we're going to pick apart. So uh, we, we need to get in the Bibles for ourselves and not just take some words that a man told us that said Jesus appeared to him and told him these things, right? Because that is Gnosticism. Colossians 2, 18. Well, let, let's look at verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophies. That is through the wisdom of the world. Wisdom, remember that, because we're going to talk a little bit about what Gnosticism is again because we've been infiltrated with Gnosticism on our Christian televisions and all over. And until I really started studying this, I had no idea. And then the more I've dug and gotten research, the more I'm understanding how this doctrine is all part of the New Age and you'll, you'll, see what's, you'll see how much new age is coming forth in, in our churches now, which I had no clue he would even dare call it that. But it says, Beware lest any man, any man spoil you through philosophies. Let no man, in verse 18, beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Okay, so I want to just share a couple things. The Colossian church was being infiltrated with Gnostic teachings. Now, I've shared some of this before, but we've heard so many things that are contrary to what the truth is, we have to keep repeating some things so we get what the truth is. So Gnosticism means knowledge in the Greek, and it becomes a tool for controlling life. Now, remember that. The Gnostics thought they had wisdom, and through this wisdom, they could control the forces and the laws of the universe. In the Gnostic worldview, the physical world is governed by forces and laws. I don't know, a lot of you maybe were raised on the force of faith and all these different forces, so we're going to go into some of that today. And what is happening, it's introducing another Jesus and another gospel not found in scriptures. You can take a few scriptures and build doctrines out of it. And some of the scriptures that some of these people have used we're going to go into today. They taught that man could become divine and through special knowledge and formulas. Just, they just keep saying, and I shared with you last week on uh, how they, almost all the word of faith preachers at one point or another said you are gods, you are the incarnate. You're not, the, you're, you're not just a son of God, but you're equal, you're co-equal. And we're going to talk about how that's wrong. But they reject the cross. And they say instead of Jesus dying, he had to go into hell. Uh, I'm going to share some things today that you might be surprised to find out about hell. They say he was a mere man to show us the way and how to control our destiny and to render himself equal with the highest God. It is man-centered and self-centered. It's, it's a man-centered gospel, and it brings man up and lifts God down. God is now on the outside looking in, and he needs a covenant man, they said, to rule the world. Some of this is kingdom now, and some of this is word of faith doctrine. God can be known and controlled by man, they say, through knowledge, or if you just have enough faith. Formulas and forces is what they talk about to get to, into these laws. They call it the force of this, the force of that, the law of this, the, the law of prosperity. Are these things true? Is it important what we believe? Yes, it is. They believe they are wiser and more intelligent than the apostles because now we have new apostles with greater revelation than the apostles that saw Jesus. <laughs> Think about that. That's arrogance right there. Very arrogant, and they have new formulas and laws and visitations. The main thing they don't have is humility. All of these elitists are very proud. Gnostics long to know what is beyond the Bible. The Bible is not enough 
for Gnostics. They always want to have revelations from an angel or from a visitation for someone. They, they always want more than what the Bible says. Keep that in mind. What is the object of Gnosticism? Power. It's, it's not strange that now we have movements of signs and wonders that are trying to raise people from the dead. I don't know if you've heard about that. And <laughs> they've never risen one from the dead, but they believe that because Jesus was just a mere man with the anointing, that we can do what Jesus can do. This is Gnosticism. By controlling the spirit world, they believe they can control their physical world and their five senses. Does any of this ring a bell? This is Gnosticism. Now we have today's Gnosticism. Jesus was born again, they say, in the pit of hell, and he became the first of those to be born again. They call it Jesus had to be born again. Um, into the new covenant. A born again man is seated at the right hand of God is what they say. Now the Bible tells us that God was 100% God and 100% man. He was the sacrifice for our sins, okay? Not, um, they, they deny that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. Do you know how serious that is? When you come against the very doctrines, the basis 101 of what Christianity is? Uh, Jesus, in their system, is one of the first among equals. Now they call us co-equal with God. And these are popular preachers, and there's popular uh, schools rising up all over the world. And you're going to see why about the New World Order, why this is uh, happening. God told us it was going to happen, but it's happening before our very eyes. So the Gnostics believe they're in control of their own health, wealth, and power. Uh, the Gnostics believe Jesus Christ came to restore mankind to their rightful place as equals with God. The truth is Jesus came to die on the cross and reconcile God and man through the forgiveness of sins. That's very basic, but it's being lost today. They teach, since man is equal with God, he can walk in the God kind of faith and walk in the God kind of love. By walking in God's love, they say, you release a force to work in your behalf, a force stronger than any force in existent, existence. But all of this teaching is apart from God. See, we're called to live and abide in him. This teaching keeps you separated. It's, it's man really doesn't need God once he knows these laws. Do you see that subtlety in there? It's lifting you to a place you control your destiny, and who needs God then? They have missed the crucified Lord Jesus and received a glittery gospel of the world that says you can have it all. And the thing with kingdom, they want it all now. We believe in an eternity where there's another whole world, and we're... we're trying to live right in this realm, so when we go there, you know, it's, it's another whole realm. There's his kingdom now, power now. Uh, their main focus is the believer's identity. I am, what it got, it, everything's about you, and their powers. They focus on identity, who they are, and powers. Now, uh, this book, The New World Order by Ralph Epperson, he spent most of his whole life trying to figure out the New World Order. And you can download some of his stuff for free. But the New World Order, he said, there will be a new religion. Now listen to what he said the New World Order is, okay? The worship of man and his mind. The basic tenets of Christianity were the basis for the Old World, or old world Order that will have to be eliminated. And I wanna show and tell you guys today about what we're gonna study. We have been under the influence of trying to destroy the old world order and Christianity is for what it really is in truth. Because they say Christianity will have to be eliminated. The Bible will be rewritten to fit in with the new religion and this is a very good thing if you're taking notes. Error puts us in charge. Truth puts God in charge and tells us to surrender to him for his will. 
In these movements, you're taught, if it be thy will, it's doubt, it's unbelief, you never say it because you have the mind of a God, you know what to say, you can command. All the power is in your words, not in Jesus. Does that make sense? Uh, a little bit from this book here. Oh, I forgot to turn my lights on. No wonder. Let there be light. In the New World Order, what he's saying, this is the battle, and I want to see if you guys uh, see what's happening in our world right now. The battle is between the New Age and the Christian. And one of these ladies in her book entitled Secret Societies, she said, the con Christian conception of man reaching up to God and the secret society conception of man as God needing no revelation from on high and no guidance but the law of his own nature. This is what the Masons believe. You are a God. How many of us have been taught you are God? You are, uh, you are uh, little g, but you're still a God. This is part of the new age. The battle, lines are drawn between those who believe in a creator God and those who believe that man can become God. <coughs> These are the two opposing positions and the battle between them has begun. So here we've been sitting in our churches hearing these different doctrines and some of them we're gonna talk about today. This battle is in our churches now. And even though some of these movements are kind of, some of them are fading out and other ones are coming in, the basis for a lot of this started back in some of these other movements that are carrying through and we've just believed things that aren't true. Uh, what does the New Age religion offer? Why do people want the New Age? They offer personally becoming a god. But there is another bait. It's unlimited knowledge of the entire universe. One of these masons said, in the secret teachings, it is written that the mind is the savior God. Hmm. Where reason reigns supreme, inconsistency cannot exist. Wisdom lifts man to the condition of Godhead. That is Gnosticism. Books in the Bible were written against it, and guess what? It has not disappeared. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the faith movement employs what is known as a metaphysical view of salvation, which spiritualizes the atonement and de deifies man. The completion of the atonement is located in hell rather than the cross. Thus, depriving the physical death of Christ of the power to atone for our sins, which the Bible attributes solely to the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember I shared with you last week, they said the, uh, the, it is finished. It wasn't finished until he went to hell. That Jesus had to go to hell to be born again. Not true, we're gonna prove that today. The central doctrine of the Christian faith has been plundered. We are focusing on Jesus as our sacrifice, right? Well, they're saying he had to go to hell and he had to fight three days in hell and basically make a ransom to the devil. Faith movement theology concerning the cross was known to the early church as the devil ransom theory. This is not new. Or the classical theory. The early church fathers who subscribed to this thesis believed that because of sin, man belonged to Satan. In order to save mankind, God is purported to have offered his son Jesus as a ransom to the devil. This is in sharp contrast with the Bible's teaching that Christ had given himself as an offering for us as a sacrifice to God, not to Satan. He gave himself an, uh, to, to the Lord, okay? This is what giving the devil way too much power. A uh, couple other things I want to share on this page. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 6, 14. Paul did not glory in any mythical spiritual death of Christ, nor did he ever speak of a glorious redemption completed in hell. 
It was the cross that Paul centered his attention on and what he gloried in was the cross. Revelations 1.5, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, describes the cleansing and the purifying power of the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. All of a sudden now the blood isn't so important. What they teach on is, it's so, the cross isn't important. You know what this teaching really is? The enemy of the cross. It's much more serious as I study it how important it is that we believe what the Bible says and not what we've been told by men. He said, this is my blood which is shed for many for the remission of their sins. Matthew 26, 28. The central forces of any doctrine the, cent the central focus of any doctrine of atonement should be on the fact that Christ's death is a sacrifice to God. The righteous and holy God is the party that must be satisfied by atonement, not Satan. Does that make sense? Um, there's so much more about scriptures, but God did not, nor has he ever, owed Satan a ransom. In fact, God has never owed Satan a thing except to cast him down to the bottom burning lake. Is Satan in hell? Where is Satan? According to the word of faith, Jesus had to go to hell for three days. The devil beat him up real good, and then he could come back, right? This is gotquestions.org. Is Satan in hell? Where is Satan? At the moment, Satan isn't even in hell. Did you know that Satan is not in hell yet? Satan roams the earth seeking people to tempt into sin and thus separ separate from God. 1 Peter 5, 8, be alert and sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. He can't be prowling around here and in hell at the same time. He's not like God. Looking for those that he can devour. In John 14, 30, Jesus called Satan the prince of this world. And the apostle Paul referring to him as the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient, Ephesians 2, 2. Satan does not live in hell. He lives and works on the earth and is in the heavens circling it. So for them to say that he went to hell and that the devil's in hell, that's a lie right there because he's not in hell yet. And the, the, um, that's one of the major things you need to find out is that the devil isn't there yet. So where did he get the keys from the death, hell, and grave? According to the word of faith, you know, Jesus got him back from the devil. Satan is the father of lies, and he influences and rules the world right now. And Satan desires worship. And for those that want to be a god, they are worshiping the Antichrist. There is only one God, and we're not it. Amen. Jesus will return to earth and collect what belongs to him. He will defeat the followers of Satan and claim his elect for himself. Ultimately, Satan will be thrown into the lake of fire and tormented day and night forever. He's the one that's going to be tormented. Uh, Jesus will judge unbelievers according to what they have done during their lives. Anyone whose name is not found in the written book of life is thrown into the lake of fire where Satan and his minions will be by that time, Revelations 20, verse 13. So the whole thing that Jesus had to go to hell when he, he isn't there, do you understand? That is amazing. Uh, the Bible teaches that man will forever be man and God will be forever God. Exodus 9, 14, there is none like God in all the earth. Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Isaiah 43, 10, you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you therefore know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. One God. Isaiah 44, 6, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and besides me there is no God. Isaiah 44, 6. The movements we are dealing with blur the distinction between God and humanity. It's very confusing, because they want to give us the same power 
If Jesus went to hell and had to be reborn, then we as a man can do everything that Jesus could do. It's what they say. And that men can be gods. A lot of you probably didn't know this was at the heart of their teaching, but the heart of the teachings of these movements is you can be God, just like God, if you have enough faith. Heresy is spiritually deadly, and the speakers of poison must be identified. We don't want to fall into those kind of errors. Twisting the truth. The Bible calls Christians partaker of the divine nature, 2 Peter 1.4. However, in examining this verse, it becomes clear that this verse is speaking of an endowment of divine power from God to live a holy life. Something no man can do without the Lord's help. They take it as it's your power. No, we have his power. We're connected to him, right? See the difference? They're making it subtly, subtly. It's not the Jesus of the Bible. It's the Jesus of their own making. That's why this is so dangerous and it's very popular everywhere because beware when Christianity is popular. The true gospel will not be popular. So the popularity of these movements are coming from the Antichrist. The war is on, folks. The truth is going to be harder and harder to find. That's why you've got, we've got to know our Bibles. Uh, the Bible teaches that only of Jesus Christ can it be said, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So what do we believe? He was fully God and he was fully man. They believe that Jesus put aside everything. He put away. He just came as a man. And like I shared last week, they said any man could have died in our place. That is totally coming against the deity of Jesus. This is not a, a little matter. This is huge. Because from those doctrines come all these other weird doctrines, which we're going to go through. That's why we have to get back to some of these lies and unravel ourselves to find out what is really truth because we've been taught wrong. They teach any man who has been born again is an incarnation and Christianity is a miracle. The believer is as much as an incarnation as was Jesus of Nazareth. So they're lifting the born again man to the place of Jesus. Do you see that? And that was in uh, the Word of Faith. Ken and Kenyon and all of this, his family, a lot of his books, same thing. This is uh, metaphysical and new thought and new age and Christian science with Christian terms. One scripture they use to support the idea that men are gods is Psalms 82, 6. I have said you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. The teachers ignore the context of this verse. The Lord is rebuking the judges of Israel who held the poor of the land under their judgment as if they were gods over them. But the judges did not judge righteously. In the very next verse, the Lord undermines the vast difference between himself and the unjust judges. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So this was a whole, you have to read it in context, they were judging and they were ruling over people and they were not doing it right. The same happens, people get in leadership and they just go crazy, don't they? They want all this power. But a true believer, humility is their sign. These teachers are famous for the name it and claim it, confess it, possess it, the theology of greed. Word, listen to this, word and the word of faith does not mean the word of God, the Bible. It means the words of men who are gods, who are in their view gods. Let me say that again. The word and the word of faith does not mean the word of God, the Bible. It means the words of men who are in their view gods. Remember, there's going to be a war, the new age. It's going to be a new religion. It's going to be man in his mind. These teachers claim that the spoken words of believers, whether truly Christians or not, doesn't matter, it will work for anyone. Activate God. 
So now it's not trusting in the Lord and his word and we're trusting him, we're surrendered and we're living and walking and abiding by the Holy Spirit, living in a, a life as a believer. Now our words, not God, our words have power. We can control our destinies. We can control our health. We can control how much prosperity we're going to have. Just give money to them and we're promised prosperity. So now they have jets and they have palaces and all this and that. Proof this isn't the right gospel. When we do not use our words to activate God, he cannot help us. All the power is put in your words. When we use our confession according to the proper formula, he is then bound to act on our behalf. Poor God, he's so bound. Faith is God's source of power, they say. Yes, you are in control. So if man has control, who no longer has it? One of the most famous word of faith preachers says, I'm going to say it again. Yes, you are in control. So if man has lost control, who no longer is, has it? God has lost all his power and he's given it to his man. These teachers love to claim Proverbs 6 2 as a proof text. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. But the verse has nothing whatsoever to do with the activation of faith laws by our confession. Examined within its context, it's clearly a teaching on making ill-advised promises. Don't be telling someone you're going to co-sign for them and then all of a sudden now the bill comes on you. He's telling you to be careful because if you made a covenant with someone, you're going to be snared by the words of your mouth if you said you're going to do something. It's not enough for the word of faith teachers to exalt man to the status of Godhood. They also demote God to the status of the genie in the lamp. The word of faith movement is the worship of our faith rather than in the worship of God. Let me, let me say that again. The word faith movement is the worship of our faith. We're always we trying to do, we're always going to another seminar to get more faith. I just have to have more knowledge. Well, it didn't work because it's not God's problem. He's done everything he's ever going to do. Must be on your problem. You don't have enough faith. They always have a way out. But as I read way back in the day, the Death by Faith article, Death by Faith, get that if you can. It shares how all these faith preachers have been sick. They've died with diseases. Um, the same sickness and disease hits them. I guess it doesn't work. But they pretend it works. Go get that, the Death by Faith. The word faith movement is the worship of our faith rather than the worship of God. Uh, having faith in your faith, you ever heard that? Is a mockery of having faith in God. We are to have faith in him. This doctrine subtly takes you away from the real Jesus and it puts yourself on the throne. That is so dangerous. And like he says here, many have died unnecessary because their parents didn't want to go to the doctor saying it was an unbelief. And I know people that have died because they wanted to have their faith work. Now this last part is the word of faith and prosperity teachings. And her name is Trisilla Tillin. T-R-I-C-I-A-T-I-L-L-I-N. She's got a lot of good things on the internet and she talks about 10 reasons to reject the word of faith teachings. We need to know what we believe because it has infiltrated all of our lives at some point. Even though you think you might not, there's, there's so much of this on television and all over the books and all the things that are written that is actually new age and it is the new religion. Because this new religion is also going on the Catholic train. And some of the main people in this movement are connected with the Pope and are bringing this in. So we have to know what Jesus we believe in. Because otherwise, you're gonna, a lot of people have backslidden. They said, this didn't work. The laws didn't work for me. The force didn't work for me. <laughs> Just think about it. The force. That's in Star Wars, isn't it? I'm not going to read all of these, but I am going to read enough. 
This movement emphasized speaking, stating, or confessing verses found in the Bible in order to activate them. Prosperity teachings applies the word of faith techniques of claiming the promises in the Bible to wealth, well-being, prosperity, advancement, and success, as well as healing and even de cheating death. They, a lot of them thought they could live to 120. The guy I'm thinking right now, he, he died at 85, but he had heart problems. He would never tell anyone about the problems he had. He said, if I had a cold, I wouldn't let you know, because they think their words have so much power that they're going to have what they say. But he died of a heart problems anyway, way before 120 years old. So the, the roots of the doctrine were firmly planted in the soil of the metaphysical cults. This is witchcraft. When you think you can control things by your words and you can boss God around, this is so serious. When I first started studying, I thought, oh, it's just a little off. The more I study it, it's so way off. The errors that produced the new thought and Christian science had also produced the word of faith as of a Christian version. So now we've got new thought, new age, metaphysical science, all under Christian terms, and a lot of good people are teaching these doctrines. They love the Lord, but they're deceived. They don't know that uh, Satan isn't in hell yet, and they don't know that their all their power is they, they trust in themselves rather than God. Little by little, you have faith in yourself. You can write your own ticket with God. You just say it, believe it, confess it. I, you know, they're a little formula, but people do that, and they realize it doesn't work. So. What happens? This is controlling your mind. People are just, oh, I'm still sick, so I have to get more faith. I have to get more faith. How are you going to get it? They don't ever tell you. Well, you have to confess it so many times, and then just that one, that 100th time maybe might be it. You have it now. Okay, reasons to reject these faith teachings by Tracilla Tillen. You ready? Number one, it requires revelation knowledge. Like the Gnostics, heresies of all the ages, the word of faith needs special knowledge in order to be effective. Leaders see themselves as having a commission to bring new spiritual revelation to the body. They're, they're having these visitations. With Jesus is coming in for an hour and a half, talking to him just like a good old buddy. Some of them saying God wants their counsel. <laughs> Do they know who Jesus is? Have they ever been born again? <sighs> they bring new spiritual revelations to the body and they condemn sense knowledge as inadequate. You deny your symptoms. You deny your sick. You deny the physical realm because the Gnostics believe that's evil. So that's Christian science, but it's also now crept into the churches. Deny your reality. People have went crazy over this because they tried so hard and it didn't work. In this scheme, it is not sin and disobedience that causes us to fall. You don't hear much on sin. You don't hear much on sin or repentance because they believe the big weakness is your ignorance. You are destroyed. They take that one scripture. You are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So it's always you got to get more knowledge. That's Gnosticism. So in this scheme, it's not sin and disobedience that causes us to fail, but ignorance. And ignorance, they say, of the word, because now it's Christianized. That's why it's so hard to unravel from this teaching because the scriptures are used and people stand up. They, well, they, they got to be right. But when you realize that we're under attack, that the battle is between uh, Christianity and the New Age, and they are just trying to get rid of Christianity, true Christianity, and they're bringing in false gospels and false Christs. This is a serious hour, and we all have to get, repent and get right with God because things are happening, and you've got to know the real Jesus. Because if you think you're a God and a co-creator, you're going to be confessing and you think you can control the weather. And I, as you see, most people, they're doing a bad job if they can control the weather. Because we're having crises all over the world nowadays. Um, this revelation knowledge is limited to the few who can receive it. That's elitism. 
God is no respecter of persons. They believe you're going to have Joel, Joel's army right, raise up, Joel's army, and the few God men, they even call them supermen, super God men. This is the latter rain, but it's also moved into all of the other movements. Number two, it makes the almighty God and creator a weak faith being who is at the mercy of his own universal laws. Although word of faith ministers speak of God in a personal way, they treat him like an impersonal energy source with force that can be operated by the use of laws. Laws which even God has to obey in order to create and run his universe. God, they say, has left the control of the planet in man's hands. This is new age. It's powerless to intervene without a covenant partner, they say. God's omnipotence and sovereignty is totally challenged and damaged by these teachings. Nothing, God, you know, God can do what he wants. He said different places in the Bible, I am God. He does what he wants to do. He's given us a place of mercy and grace right now to get saved, right? But the devil is not in charge. And uh, they have three gods. They have God, Satan, and man, and they're all equal. They don't have anything about the human nature of man. We need to get born again. We don't take on the nature of Satan. Does that make sense? Um, number three, it makes the divine son of God into a born again man who had to die in hell to pay the price for our treason. And they all teach it. Some of my best friends, because they, they, I looked on the internet and I thought maybe they've taken some of this down because I thought, well, you know, you're all young in the Lord and you kind of preach things you shouldn't. No, these teachings are still up. Their books are still for sale. They're still selling these uh, ungodly truths that God had to go to hell. Jesus had to go to hell. Jesus, according to these doctrines, discarded his divine powers and walked earth as a mere man filled with the spirit. A mere man filled with the spirit. So we can do the works that Jesus did, is what they say. And we're having movements now. You probably heard about this little girl that died and they all tried to resurrect her from the dead and they're still trying because they're... <laughs> They're saying that it's caused a spark for revival. People that aren't saved think you're nuts. Yeah. And they believed that Jesus only had the word, like we do, and laws of faith to do miracles. When he died, his blood did not atone. This is very serious because we believe in the blood and we believe in the cross, the power of the cross and the blood. They believe it wasn't finished on the cross. He had to go to hell. This is very serious teaching. But he had to take upon himself the very sin nature of the devil, causing his spirit to die and suffer three days and three nights of hellish torment. Where the Bible is silent, we need to be silent. We don't need to make up stuff what he did for three days and three nights. <laughs> As a man, adding two, you think? As a man before the father gave the command for him to be recreated as a reborn man. Remember, they think it's a reborn Jesus, a reborn man. You are God's new age. Thus they say Jesus was just the first of many sons. The pattern for all of us to follow. No, he was Jesus. He was God in the flesh. He did a whole lot of miracles to prove he was the son of God and the son of man. We are not allowed that power and authority. I don't care what they say about signs and wonders because God can do what he wants to do and I'm thankful he's still alive and well but this doctrine takes it all into the power of man's hands. Poor God. It elevates man, number four, to be e equal with Jesus. What is that? That is Gnosticism. A conscience a consequence of the Jesus died spiritually doctrine is that all born again Christians stand in the same place of power and authority as Jesus. This would mean that we have already been resurrected from the dead and it only remains for us to gain knowledge of our new condition in order to discard the trappings of the fleshly body and begin living as spiritual gods on earth. Again, 
Gnosticism puts down the five physical senses. It doesn't allow that to be truth. They think it's evil. The Christian walk is one of education in using the same spiritual laws as Jesus in order to dominate the circumstances and do miracles. In these doctrines, believers do not depend on God's own power, nor submit to his will. They tell you if you say, if it be thy will is unbelief. What are they doing? They are taking you out of a relationship with God that he has given us through Jesus, his son. They take us out of a relationship and put us on our own. Now it's all about you, what you have to say, what you have to do, because you have to use these laws, and you're, you're obviously missing something. You're missing a law. Uh, maybe you just have to give more. Maybe you just have to confess more. You, it works. Uh, but they have the right to develop their own powers and to discover the laws governing creation and dominion on the earth. And I went through some of their teachings, the force of faith, the, all of these things are absolutely so clear when you see that this is the new age Jesus coming into view, that we are in a battle of true Christianity and it's been going on and it's gonna continue and it's gonna be very popular, the signs and wonders movement. And no, God's not in it. Because these are, are men thinking that they're Jesus on the earth with the anointing. It makes man a god. In their teaching, man has no nature of his own, but he takes his nature from his Lord. When God was his Lord, then man had a divine nature, for he was created as God of the earth, they say, but after man's fall, he took the sin nature of the devil and became like Satan. So these believers would reason that a born-again man has regained his divine nature. So what are they saying? You are a God. Your divine nature, what they're saying is, some of them aren't as blatant, but they're saying now you have the divine nature. Jesus is not the only begotten son of God. I've heard that on television. I can't even tell you. I was like, did they not read John 3.16? Almost done, you guys okay? Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to skip a couple. It replaces prayer with confession. They make fun of prayer. Now you don't pray, you confess and you decree. These guys that were trying to raise this little girl from the dead, I guess these declarations and proclamations, because we have the same power that Jesus had and he defeated death, so now they're trying to defeat death because they believe they're super men. So now it replaces prayer with confession and God's will with the manipulation of forces. They teach Christians to draw upon powerful forces that reside in the human spirit, such as the force of faith, to bring certain laws into operation. They're not making God personal. This is not a relationship with the Father through Jesus. So learning and confessing the word continually is a method used to obtain anything we want. This self-rule leads to pride and greed. But a Christian must deny himself and submit to the entire will of God as revealed moment by moment by the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. We're seeking his guidance. But you see how this separates you? It makes you all on your own, basically. You gotta know the word like Jesus did and you can just create whatever you want. You can have whatever you want. You can have what you say. It denies the reality of sin and sickness. They teach that the only true reality is spiritual and the earthly senses are deceptive. Can't confess you have a cold. You can't confess you're sick because you'll die, it tickled me to death. I mean, the, the power they place on words is beyond, it's way beyond, it's way out there. Thus believers are led to deny that they're ill, poor, in any way below par. So what do you have a bunch of fake Christians? You try to fellowship with some of these, how are you? I'm on top and rising. They're hurting, but they don't know how to ask for help because if they ask for help and ask for prayer, well, that's unbelief. See how this has just crippled a lot of Christians that love Jesus, but they, they've been taught wrong. The last one, 
It focuses on self and the world instead of God and heaven. I am who I, God's, I am who God says I am. I can do what God's, all their confessions are about them. But the Bible says we can do all, all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen? It's through him. It's living through him. Walking in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. It's still supernatural. We're, we're living and abiding and walking with the Lord through the Holy Spirit and his word. But they take all that away and they, they have new visions and revelations and Jesus just pops in wherever they are and starts telling them new things. You don't need to pray now. You just command your angels and they'll do whatever you want. Well, we go back to Colossians 2. Those are God's angels. <laughs> he controls them. It focuses on self and the world instead of God and heaven. The emphasis in word of faith doctrine is all on success, prosperity, advancement, gain, health, and strength. There is little compassion, and this is what's so sad, little compassion for those who fail to come up to these standards. So it's always con condemnation. People are always being condemned because they don't feel they can measure up to being that elite class that has so much faith. Any adversity is said to be a lack of faith, to confess the appropriate word. Get, get that? They, they use the word as a God rather than the God of the word, if that makes sense. Ministries that emphasize prosperity have ended up in greed, manipulating believers into giving money they didn't have. And that's the thing you're gonna have to stand before God, all of us, for manipulating, trying to, make scripture say stuff it didn't say, to make people have false hope, false promises, and people are devastated. Um, this, these teachings about faith have become rituals and formulas for producing instant results, and many who could not or would not go down this road were derided and rejected as having no faith. When we came out of these, in, into these movements, we thought we, we knew it all. We are special. Christianity before, they didn't know what we know. We're following a man that has visitations of Jesus. He's had eight of them. We were all suckered into this until we started seeing that God said he's not going to add or take away. He's not bringing new revelations. Anybody could say they had a revelation. All they have to say is that Jesus appeared to them and now the Bible changes? That's what Gnosticism is. They go by dreams, revelations, and it's, a lot of it is going into the occult spirit guides. Can God give us dreams? Yeah, he can do whatever he wants to do. I don't believe that he's done, but on the other hand, we have this excess that we have to help people come out of. And to me, more people have not dug into this to find out, okay, what is right, what is wrong? And I get emails all the time, I'm still coming out, what's true, what's not true? So we just take it little by little. We didn't answer all the questions today, but hopefully you see more that there is a, a war. It's going to be man and Christianity is going to be put down. The Bible says we're going to be persecuted. There's going to be a rising of the beast. And guess what? He's already here trying to make man as gods. Amen. And everyone said? We want to share a message with our YouTube audience today. Please like and share on your social media if you find these YouTubes helpful. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to our channel so you get every message right in your inbox, that would be nice, and we'll send them right to you. We are viewer-supported here, and if you'd like to help us, you can donate by going online to livinginhispresencechurch.org. In the upper right-hand corner, there is a Give button where you can give by credit card through PayPal or Stripe. Or if you'd prefer to send us a check, you can send it to LIHP at P.O. Box 1889, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. Thank you so much for being part of our YouTube family. God bless. <laughs>